This is Japan Hockey with your hosts, Peter Wojernoff and Paul Swinback. Welcome to another episode of Jablam Hockey. I'm your host, Peter Wojernoff. You can follow me on Twitter at Russian98. And I'm Paul Zwambag. You can follow me at Zwambag, Z-W-A-M-B-A-G. Hello, everybody. Let's get straight to it. Trending now. John Scott first in early all-star voting. Crazy. Yeah, just making a mockery of this whole NHL voting in the captains. I really don't think the NHL was ready for this, and I don't know what they're going to do. Well, you can only really blame M versus W for this. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, I really believe it's all Wyshynski's fault. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure one night, Merrick and Wish went out, they went drinking, Wish yeah. won a bet, and he said, this is what I want to do. Because this is the kind of stuff he does on Yahoo, this is the kind of stuff he likes to roll with, kind of a little bit of a fluff and fun thing, and Merrick's like, all right, let's do it. This is an asinine idea. I, th- I think they just wanted to make a mockery of the whole All-Star game. There's a lot of people that don't like the All-Star game whatsoever. Yeah. And I think there are two guys that are just not happy with it. So they're making a joke of it. Yeah, they have a whole hashtag, uh, John Scott for All-Star yep. game. And now John Scott has come out and said that he does not want to be voted in. Nice. To the All-Star game. So That's good for he, him. I like that. Is he going to... Be honorable and say thanks for voting, but I'm passing my captaincy off. I would, I would, would like the, that. I think he would. What would the NHL do? Take the next? Well, you know about the Rory Fitzpatrick thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So there was a bit of a, we lost votes somewhere yeah, and yeah, they yeah, null yeah. and void him. Yeah. So that kind of thing might, they kind of might do that kind of thing or they'll allow him down. Yeah, and there's been two other players that I've found on Twitter Mm -hmm. that have come out and said, don't vote for me. Okay. Can you name the two? I can't. I can't. Who are they? Okay. Yermer Yager has come out on his Twitter account and said, fans, I appreciate your votes for for All-Star Game. Three on three would kill me, and I don't want to die yet. (laughs) Thank you for understanding. Too old. Gotta love you. So he's the number one, and which is disappointing because he would be loads of fun. For sure, from Florida, yeah. he's playing exceptional yeah. still at his age, We've, and everybody loves him. Yeah, and we picked him to represent Florida Panthers we when we did our draft. So, the other guy, which is the guy that got voted in last year, who is from Latvia, because Gergensons. Latvia Gergensons, yeah, Gergensons. Zemgis Gergensons, tweeted, and he tweeted in Latvian, so it's translated. With all due respect to the fans, please do not vote for me for this year's All-Star Game. Such things must be earned. Basically saying he's not playing well enough to be at the All-Star Game, so don't vote him. Again, good for him. Yeah. He stood up. He's not, he I, I he's thought he was going to be the guy that took all the votes again because Latvia was going to go crazy. But yeah. with that, I'm sure the Latvians will see it and be like, okay, we understand. Yeah, he got he got his limelight last year. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. That's so, a good thing. I guess like it's... again, the only way I wouldn't mind John Scott going to the All Star game is to use his actual skill, his pugilistic skill in combating versus somebody else. Maybe. Yeah. So uh, who would you want him to fight? Ooh, See, a tough that, one right that'd now. Be, that'd be fun to watch. But there's a lot of guys out there. You know that could give it, give him a good run yeah, for his money in yeah. the Ulster game. Um, so they make a new skills competition for John Scott. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> it's hard now because it's three on three. So with the skills, it might make a little more sense. Yeah. But if it was the old school five on five and a fight breaks out kind of thing, yeah, that would be funny and yeah. great. So again, if you went back to 1997 Ulster game, Dale Hunter. Uh, went to yeah. the Ulster game, and he almost fought, and everybody kind of laughed and chuckled, and they know because Dale Hunter was he could put up the points, but he could also known he's also known for fighting, so it was pretty cool. He kind of wiggled his gloves and shook, uh, you know, and he was ready to go for a fight, and nobody was 
go for it, so they didn't have... But it was funny. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what John Scott does with this. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere too soon, but... No, I don't think so. Yeah. That That's the how powerful hockey Twitter is right now, that yeah. two mainstay guys, Wish and Merrick, made this up, and everybody's riding it. It's crazy. I, I think it's a horrible idea. I think they shouldn't have even brought it up. Those yeah. bastards. Yeah, but it's because nobody <laughs> enjoys the All-Star game, and for the people that do enjoy the All-Star game, it's a break. It's, yeah. it's supposed to be fun. It's just a little fun. Yeah, that's yeah. All it let, is. The guy, let the guys have a little fun in the middle of a crazy season, and then they ramp it back up for the playoff run. Yeah. I, th- I, I in my opinion, I wish we kind of went back to the All-Star team versus the Stanley Cup champion oh, that format. Would be that'd, that'd be, be cool. Good. Yeah. But again, then that whole team's tired kind of thing, going back to the next game maybe. Yeah. It's kind of unfair. Yeah. Or bringing it All-Star versus Team Russia or something. Yeah, yeah. But again, it's tricky. That's yeah. a tricky situation. Yeah. All right, next. Also trending right now, the Leafs have sent Jonathan Bernier down to the Marlies on a 10-game, 10-day conditioning stint. What do you think about this? Uh, I think Lamarillo somehow pulled this off. I I don't know how he finds these loopholes. It's ridiculous. He doesn't have to go through waivers. And it's because Bernier agreed to it? Yeah, I guess so. How do you talk Bernier into going to play AHL? Hey, you want to play some hockey? Exactly. That's what he. They probably broke it down to him. Yeah. You're not going to be playing for a while. You're not going to be playing at all. Yeah. You want to play some games? Well, you're going to send you there. It's just across the street. Yeah. And you're going. We're going to get you four games because yeah. you know the Marlies have, I think, like three games this weekend, three games next weekend, kind of thing going on. So I bet he's going to get like the Friday Sunday type deal. Yeah. Like the first game and the third game of both weekends. Makes sense, in my opinion. It's good. Hopefully, to me, it's all in his head. It's a it's a mental game for Bernier. I'm not a huge fan of Bernier, but I can see that he has the talent. You can see when he's in the ice. But he's always had, and we'll go back into this because our next segment's going to be uh, the report cards for Mark. He's always had some brain farts. And that's... <laughs> It's a mental thing. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get right into it. Uh, quarter mark report cards. Paul, you've got your team. Let's see. What do you got for the Pens? Penguins report card. I'm going to start with the mainstay of our team, Sidney Crosby, captain. He's playing just over half a point per game, which is not Sidney that's, Crosby. That's all hockey. Point. Yeah. So he's at least over a point per game player. Yeah. On the regular. So... C minus, which still not that low. Still not that low because he's still putting up points. It's just not Sidney Crosby rate points. Yeah. So I I couldn't give him any lower just because of that. But he's a minus ten. That's ridiculous. For yeah. Crosby, has he ever even been below plus ten kind of thing? At by the end of the season at least. He's only been a minus player by the end of the year once. And how much? Minus one. Minus one. And it was his rookie year. There you go. And again, when you're a rookie, you don't care that much about defense. Yeah. And even minus one, wow, that's like nothing. Yeah. And those weren't very good teams when he was coming in Mm -hmm. to the league. They were not. Penguins weren't that good then. They were just coming out of the basement. It was 2005, 2006. Yeah. Yep. My next guy, the MVP of the team, Marc-Andre Fleury. If he wasn't playing so well we would be in the basement or fighting out of the playoff spot. Flurry has always been solid yeah. during the season. Yeah. Kind of shaky during the playoffs, have we noticed. But he's playing even better right now during yeah. the season. So, A+. Plus. I, wow. I don't think a he, big A+. Plus. Yeah, I don't think he could play any better. Like, I haven't seen a big fault in his hey, game right now. Hey, is he nominated in, for Vesna Awards? You didn't nominate him, did you? No. no ah, didn't. then how could you give him an A+, plus? just give him an A? Because he's got a, <laughs> he's going up against 30 other goalies. He's, he's, he's an A+. All right. I almost put him on my Vesna list, but you by didn't. the way, but I didn't. I, uh, wanted, I took off the Pens what bias hat. What's, what's Lundqvist, then? You would have given him an A++ plus plus to a billion? No, I'm still an A+. Plus <laughs> to both the... Two students can still get A pluses and one better than the other. Mm. Back to our whole MVP thing, but go ahead. Who else you got? <laughs> okay, Phil Kessel, 
B minus. He's still scoring, just not at Phil Kessel rate. How many goals does he have? Uh, I don't even know right now. He has he's like about eight. He scored two on oh. Tuesday. On Tuesday, Tuesday. okay. So, so that's why. So yeah. it might be even higher. Yeah. Now. Okay. And he's playing with Malkin. They started him with Crosby, and that didn't work. I didn't think at the beginning of the year that it was going to work. Okay. Just because... Two I, different styles. Yeah, and yeah. Kessel... And that probably hurt Crosby a little bit, because you think he thought he had to pass a little bit more. Yeah, and yeah. it probably okay. hurt his motivation, because they brought in Kessel, and it was supposed to be Crosby's toy, yeah. and <laughs> now he's gone to Melkin, so I would be upset if I was Crosby okay. now. No, Crosby playing and Hornquist usually click, and Kunitz and Crosby yeah, usually click, so yeah. something's not working there right now. No, and you said Kunitz, so I'm going with a D minus. This you guy go. He is not clicking. No, he's on the fourth line, third, fourth line. They have now moved him back up with Crosby and Dupuy to try and reunite that flame, that country, but again, he didn't look very good. He's yeah. only got three goals, zero assists. Not even close to what he should be doing. Yeah. He does bring energy. He's a. He does lay down the body, but not enough. Just not good enough. Evgeny Melkin, A minus. Wow, good. He's been he carrying. Well. He's been carrying the Penguins. He's got, I think, a four-game goal streak going right now, mm-hmm. where he scored in four straight games. Uh, he is scoring at a point nine six points per game. So still about his average. His career average is one point one nine. So he's, so he's a little low. But, but again, scoring is getting lower and lower. Right I now, think he's so. just going to keep going up, 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 and I think he might catch the top top five scoring. He might this get, year. Yeah. yeah, he might get up there as, as soon as these guys start clicking a little bit more. Then yeah, for it's sure. The power play. The you power play to needs to start clicking. It, and they are. That usually is one of the best power plays in the NHL. Yeah, and yeah. it isn't right now. Yeah. And another guy that is a healthy scratch right now, Daniel Sprung. I'm giving him an A just on. The fact that he wasn't even supposed to make the team. He got dra- drafted this past year. They complained about his skating. It wasn't He wasn't fast enough for NHL speed. He's playing third, fourth line minutes, and when he is playing, he's scoring. He's chipping in those is goals. Is he projected to be an excellent player, like way up there? He or? fell in the draft to oh. the Penguins. I think he was supposed to be like 20, 25, okay. but he just kept dropping because of his skating ability. Yeah. But the guy's got a shot. He can shoot the puck. Unbelievably. He played for the You need sh- to have better skating abilities, especially for playing deep. Yeah, and so I think that I think you can teach better skating ability over a wrist shot. So All right. those are my guys. What yeah. do you got? Well just to remind everybody, these report cards that me and Paul are doing, they will be posted on our Twitter and Facebook yeah. accounts. Again, at Jablam Hockey. Jablam Hockey on Facebook. My picks for the Maple Leafs. Again, we're going to be posting all the players, the entire roster, but we're only going to talk about yeah. it. And I've got to go with Corporal Komarov, Uncle Leo, the wood chipper from Fargo, Leo Komarov. This guy is solid. He's doing every single thing you ask out of him. On a contender, in my opinion, you're going to want to put Komarov maybe on a depth line, on a third line, maybe even fourth. He's filling in on a top-line role since almost day one of this season. He's putting up the points. He's adding the grit. He's winning the puck battles on the boards. He's given, you know, 110% energy all the time and still putting up decent stats. Yeah. I I was looking at the hit stats because I have a fantasy league that that perfect uh, counts hits. And in the 30 guys that are hitting this year, he's the only one to have 10 goals. Wow, so he's, he's doing everything. He's doing everything. It's, he is doing everything. Yeah. There's he, only four guys that are leading their team in goals and hits in the league. He's one of them. He's leading his own team in, in goals, goals and hits. Yep, and that's, that's why I, I gave him an A- in nice. terms of what he can do and what he's bringing so far. On the other side of things, I gave Nazem Kadri a D+. Plus. A lot of people think he's he's bringing everything on the ice. He has a lot of energy, but in my opinion, it's it's not showing enough. Yeah, you know, I uh, I'll get into it a little bit, but he's just sh- he's shooting all the time. But they're all perimeter shots. When he's in what I call the red zone, right in front of the crease, he's flubbing on the pucks, missing them. And another thing is his shots aren't hard. 
they're a little soft on his on his release. That needs to get better. Yeah, he's been a little fine face off wise. He's about fifty percent, but he needs more scoring. So and it's impressive that Babcock is happy with his game so yeah. far. So it's not like he's doing something really well on the PK. He's not playing on the PK. Yeah, yeah. He's on the power play. He's still not scoring. He just finally scored his third goal of the season. Yeah, the other game, the last game. So that's way far off when you're playing first line minutes on the first line with the top players. Yeah, with JVR. And then you're also playing power play line number one minutes. Yeah, yeah. So he's driving to that at times, but he's not finishing. So I had to give him a D plus. Uh, next on the list, I gave Morgan Riley a B. I still see room to improvement, and I think he will get there. But so far, pretty solid. He is on Leafs defense, maybe one, number one. It's to me, Dion and him. Are both flip-off, yeah, which yeah. one is the best defenseman this year? Phaneuf is still almost leading the Leafs in points. Yeah. He's in the top 10 in defensive points. But Riley is just behind him, and he's playing a solid game. And I do like what Babcock do, did, and what I like coaching's what they do is they team up the younger offensive-type defenseman with the defensive one, and Hunwick's supplying yeah, that for yeah. Riley and letting him get that more – room to skate through the defensive zone and put up some points. I still think he can put up more points. Even on the power play, I haven't... I, you know what? Babcock hasn't used him that much on the power play, and I think they should. Though, I believe second power play line is clicking. Yeah, yeah. And it's clicking with guys like my next one, Tyler Bozak. So underrated, under the radar. Everybody thought the Leafs should get rid of him at a 4.2 cap. But he's playing on, like, third line. Basically, he's still playing a little bit on the PK and doing well in there. But on the third line, with guys like Peep Aaron Toe, who is a throwback from the Canadians, yeah. even Sean Mathias. And Mathias is doing okay, but he hasn't put up that many points or stats. No. no. Aaron Toe is putting mo- most of his points on the power play. Yeah. And Bozak is also doing well on the power play with him. And that's why Aaron Toe is helping in that aspect with scoring. But he's also doing well on the second and third lines, five on five. Winning face-offs, playing well as a two-way forward, and he deserves a B+. All right. Now we're going to the goalies, and I have to give him an A. I didn't go with an A+. I gave James well, he's not, Reimer He's not playing a. as well as Fleury, so that's fine. Oh, he isn't. Statistically, it shows that he is. Save percentage, what is it, .926. Goals against average, 2.07. He deserves to be up there. I'm giving him an A+. Obviously, slight room improvement. People can see it. Reimer fights for every single puck, but he still allows the squeaker weak one once in a while. Almost every game, actually. But he's making so many saves. And his defense, under Babcock, they're playing better, but there's still a lot of holes. Yeah, yeah. Polak's a little slow. Riley and Gardner still making some errors, especially Gardner. And those guys, and... Bernier's, other than Reimer, uh, Bernier is an F. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hasn't Agreed. stopped a thing. Hasn't had a win since April, a regulation win since March. Eight games, I believe, this season. Oh, and eight. Yes. And he is allowing a lot of bad goals. Yeah, yeah. That goal again against the, from Stepan from center ice. Awful. But the thing is, what, the reason why I've never really liked Bernier is even when he's on his game he's in my opinion he has much better goaltending skill than a lot of goalies in the NHL even Reimer but he still has brain fart goals he still has them even when he's playing well right now he's not playing well and he's also allowing those bad goals and he has been really bad so I have to give him an F yeah, that's a good call. A guy that is supposed to be in the NHL who gets an AHL conditioning stint, as we talked about earlier, Yep, deserves an F. Yep. Easy, easy. He's probably the worst goalie this yep. season in the entire NHL. All right, let's get straight into the team ISO for this week. It's the Carolina Hurricanes. Projections, of course, they are exactly where they deserve to be, yep. near the bottom of the NHL. 
that's what we expect. Yeah. And that's where they are, and that's probably where they're going to end up by the end of the season. I even think they could finish, like, bottom one, two, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. And they need an Austin Matthews type player. So. And the Leafs need Austin Matthews. No, Why do they have to get him? <laughs> they don't need Austin Matthews. They'll get, like, Jacob Chitrin or something from yeah. Sarnia's thing. Help so, back end again. What uh, so what's going on with their roster? Okay, let's go. Let, we already talked about their goalies. Let's yeah. dig deep into the goalies. Why are they playing Cam Ward so much? He Is was he the have... MVP for the playoffs when they won oh, a billion God. years ago. Oh, God. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a billion why. years ago. I think that's why. That's still in their heads. He's played 18 games compared to Lax. He hasn't been solid for a couple of years now. Why not play Eddie Lack yep. and find out what you have? You have him for another two years yep. on a exactly. pretty good contract. Cam Ward's up at the end of this year, and I don't think a goalie's or team's going to want Cam Ward because of his contract. Well, Carolina could technically keep some of that salary for that's a higher true. pick yeah. in return. That's true. And that's why I was thinking with Montreal or some other team, that might want a veteran goalie at the deadline, yeah, maybe. Yeah, the and Cam Ward. Some if, of the cap. if Cam Ward's getting moved, it'll be at the deadline when the cap yep. hits lower. So, look for that. Yeah, and it's, that's basically all you can say about Cam Ward. He's yeah. not playing well, but so his save percentage is eight ninety eight. Good. Mm-hmm. Under nine hundred is not good for a goalie. Yeah. But his even strength, five on five. Save percentage is nine fourteen. So that's, uh, that's all right. better. It's a whole lot better than Eddie Lacks, eight seventy four. Wow. Even strength eight eighty six. That's rough. That so, is rough. Yeah. So Cam Ward's being affected by power play, penalty kill, mm, Carolina's penalty teams. kill. Is, so yeah. That's more coaching. Yeah. Exactly. So. So what are you talking about? Put uh, Eddie Lack a little bit. You gotta, you gotta find out <laughs> how good Eddie Lack is. He's, yeah, he hasn't played enough games. No, and you don't. No. Uh, you want him to play the majority of the games to see what you have in him. You spend yeah. two picks on him. All right, well, let's go straight to the stud. The only real stud I see on this team on the back end. Paul. Yeah, if he played anywhere else, he'd be in the conversation. He of would be Norris. doing a lot of commercials, maybe and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. He maybe he is in the Carolina area. I don't know. He's your he's the leading but, scorer. How's yeah. your leading scorer defenseman? Well there yeah. there are other defensemen that are That's the problem with this team. They should be being led by Skinner and Eric Stahl, but they're not. No. They haven't yeah. been good for a while. Skinner yeah. has been invisible yeah. for a couple of seasons Awful. now. Yeah. You know, his he such a breakout when he first started yeah. and just invisible now. Yeah. As I like to call the nickname for Eric Stahl, Invisible Boy. Because back <laughs> And now he's really invisible. But before, he was getting a lot of first and second assists, and you wouldn't even see him on the ice. It would be a quick pass, yeah. bang, bang, and he, yeah. it would be a goal. And that's why I nicked him an invisible boy, but he yeah, really is invisible right now. He's far past his prime. Yeah. It's, it's a little sad there. That they're is he going to get moved? Are they going to move him, you think? They got all these... There's this whole family thing with stalls and maybe Sutter. So maybe he goes to the Rangers. Yeah, I guess they'll go with his brother Mark. Yeah, but again, salary cap. Maybe maybe they'll pull a Sedin and be like, "Yo, you need to trade us both. If you're gonna <laughs> trade one, you gotta trade us both." I would say no way. So I'm a huge fan of Jordan Stahl. He, I have a man crush on Jordan Stahl. Yeah, he, always have. He since still the puts in Pete's. 110, percent and he's what? Is he still playing well on the PK? They don't play him that much on the PK. Oh, they should. Like yeah, that's I, where he's good. I watched the game the other night, and he wasn't even the first set of forwards out on the PK. Okay. How yeah. is that possible? He's such a good PKer. Yeah, he is. So I don't know why they're not playing him out on the PK. But talk, right. talking about the rest of the team, there's not a lot of positives on this team. Yeah. Not even, even not even their farm team's very good. Yeah. I went looking prospects. for their prospects, yeah. and there's not a whole lot out there. They did draft... Hayden Fleury, 7th overall in 2014. And I don't see him being outstanding compared to the usual 6th, 7th overall no, picks. No, no. It's two. And so. they drafted Hannafin this year, so... And he, he he's already playing. He is already playing. He looks yeah. all right, actually. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully... And like we've said before, defensemen take a lot longer yeah. to produce. He, he doesn't look that bad for no. rookie. So, so Fleury's playing Red Deer Rebels. 
0.86 points per game played, 18 points in 21 games. Solid. So, not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. He's going to be playing with World Juniors as one of their main rear guards because I think they're going to have a pretty young team Hannafin? this year. No, Fleury. Oh, this is Fleury. Fleury. Okay. Fleury. Yeah, okay. They're going to have a pretty young team, wondering. so they need they need those veteran Hannafin guys. Hannafin could have, right? Is yeah. he still of age? Yep. Yeah, he yep. is, right? Yep. But. They're we'll we'll have to get into that closer to the World Juniors. We will. We will be talking about Juniors yeah, perfect. in a week or yeah. two. Excellent. Um, a goalie, Alex Nijelkovic. Nijelkovic. That's yeah, what I would say. There you go. I'm Serbian. Yeah. Yeah. Nijelkovic. Yes, I've heard about Should've him. Should have just threw He's... that one to you. <laughs> <laughs> he is a very, very small goalie. Yeah. 5'11". He's got good numbers for Which his is... size, though. I've, I've, because I'm Serbian, I've heard of him. Yeah, so. and 5'11", we say it's such a brainwash because we say he's such a small goalie, but 5'11 is... Used to be the average. Used to be the average, but now average. you got guys like Ben Bishop, who's 6'6". Six, yeah. six, like, the average is now like blown up to like a 6.3. Yeah, three, he six was an OHL goalie of the year in 2013-14 for the Plymouth Whalers. Yeah. He now plays for the Flint Firebirds, which is a its own disaster of a team. <laughs> he is an extremely athletic guy. He is. This is known throughout the league that yep. this guy is a top athlete. 16 games played, 8 wins, 6 losses. So yeah, that's mainly because of the Flint Firebirds are not a very good team. Yeah, A guy that was a sensation in that training camp, Sergei Tolchinsky. Yes. Do you remember seeing him all over the yep. score sheets? He was he a was. free agent signing for the team. He's still young. He was undrafted because 5'8", 170 pounds. Those yeah. guys don't get drafted anymore. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And well, I, they're slowly going to they're now slowly because going the ice to, is being opened up. These guys are head, heads. falling in the drafts, and I hate it because they have such great talent. It's unbelievable. Last two seasons in junior hockey, 30 goals, 90 points Wow! in two seasons. That's pretty impressive. This year he's playing for the Charlotte Checkers, 0.35 yeah. points per game. So he's not... Really That's scoring. their AHL team. Yeah, Charlotte Checkers are the AHL team. And so he's not really putting up many points. Yeah, he looked like he might have been one of those, you know, you always see some guy during the camp, maybe at the beginning of the season, you think it's going to break out. But yeah. We'll I'm going gonna, gonna to throw you a curveball. Eric Carlson. <laughs> spelt exactly the same way as yeah. the infamous Eric Carlson. There's a lot of Carlsons in the league right now. What's going on? Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> So this guy was drafted 2012 round four, 99th overall. I basically only wanted to bring him up because he's the same name state yeah. sake as the Eric. infamous Eric Carlson. He's playing in with Charlotte as well. 14 games played, only three points. That's basically the That's only rough. reason why I named him. Because he's not playing well. And they have another guy. This got really confusing <laughs> when I was coming up with these, when I was researching all these guys. Sebastian Aho. When oh. you look at this year's draftees, there's a Sebastian Aho. Yeah. spelled exactly the same way. Okay. But he's a defenseman. So I was like, oh, yeah, he's he's one of the, he's going to be like a first-round draft pick. He's not even drafted. How is he on the Hurricanes farm <laughs> system? No, this is Sebastian Aho, left winger, who plays in Carpat of the Liga, which is the Finnish league. Finnish league, yes. And his numbers? His numbers are 21 games played, 18 points. As a young kid Sorry, in, a, in a men's league, that's that's, that's pretty good. good. He's but, playing against 30, 35 year olds. But there's no outstanding player. Hayden Fleury's their top guy that we named before. Yeah, and nobody crazy, else. crazy no, good. No, but again, Hannafin's on us. Exactly, he should be yeah. good. Yeah, so we'll see. All right, let's get into the next segment. A new one, a funny one, maybe. Nickname maker. Yeah, so. People have probably noticed that Peter's got a lot of random nicknames for players. He just kind of makes them up on the go. Invisible I think. Eric Stahl, of yeah. course. Yep, and you had like Leo Komarov, Uncle Leo, and hey, that's that's a thing that's been going out on the internet, trending everywhere. Okay. Everybody knows Steve Dangle. I'm pretty sure he made up Uncle Leo. Okay, I'm gonna give you in this segment. I'm gonna give you a player, and you're gonna have to come up with. A nickname. Let's see what I can do. You might already have uh, nicknames for these guys, but let's go. We already talked about him. Because it was Team ISO of Carolina Hurricanes, I went with a hurricane. Jordan Stahl. Jordan Stahl. Are you, <laughs> you can't just go with Stahlzy. No, no, no. Not going to go with this. Yeah, not going to go with that. Okay, while you're thinking about it, I'm going to give you his actual nickname. This came from 
uh, Colby Armstrong when they played in Pittsburgh. Gronk. What? Like Gronkowski, yes. Yeah. Gronk. The reason why is because Gronk is a superhero comic book. Yes, character. yes, he has his own. And he, he, Gronk has everything. He has superhero stuff. He even has a romantic. No, the, the, not not like Rob Gronkowski. Okay. Like Gronk as a is an actual Marvel character. Oh named yes. Named Gronk. Okay. So this is who Colby named Jordan Stahl because when Jordan Stahl came into the league, he was such a big kid for his age and dominated practice against Colby and everything, and Armstrong ended up calling him Gronk, and it stuck. And ever I did since not know he, this. Ever since he was with the Penguins, it was Gronk. You're blowing my mind because I did not know that he had this nickname. Yeah, so what are you, you going to call him? Can't call him Gronk. Can't oh, I'm Stolzy. not going to call him Gronk. In my opinion, if I was going to call him something, it'd be something defensive, strong, or something to do with his large family. Okay. Blonde hair, maybe? That's a tough one. Off the top of my head. Can't be Invisible Boy, is no, it? No, that's his brother. How can, uh, he's related to Invisible Boy, so is he Invisible Man? <laughs> no. <laughs> <sighs> I'm just trying to think of something to do with family, but it's tough. Stalwart 3. Stalwart 3. That's the thing I came up with. All right, he, all right. He is Mark is second of age, or is he? Ah, oh, that's, used to that's know, what I'm trying to think of. Yeah, he's number two or this. number three? I think he's three. Yeah, I think he is three. Yeah, I think Mark is slightly taller, and of course, Eric's. Yeah, and there's Jared. I used to know that, but I don't Jared. Know I was a huge Jordan Stall fan. Yeah, Stallworth three. That's my nickname for him. Anybody All right. else? Uh, Jordan, Jordan Eberly. Give me a nickname for Eberly. Oh, it's not Ebbs, of course. No, it can't be Ebby. Yeah, can't do the typical hockey nicknames. How brutal is that? That they Ebby and Ebbs and drives me nuts when they. If you're, if you're gonna, you're just gonna give me guys with all the first names Jordan or what's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, I got a fascination okay. with Jordan. All this right, week, okay. <laughs> what do you got for me? What what Eberly's nickname? And I'm just gonna go straight with Eb Clutch. Eb Clutch, all yeah, right. yeah, because he's he been clutch. Clutch. He is clutch that we've known, uh, of course, going back to the junior days. So that's it for the ninth game maker. We got Stalwart three, and we got Eb Clutch. Eb Clutch. All right, all right. Uh, going back, we made a friendly bet a couple weeks ago, and we're gonna update you on that. Kadri versus Gronk. Goals versus TDs. Where are we at right now? Well, Kadri I'm, with three goals, and I'm still leading with Gronk at ten. He's got ten now. No, nine. Nine. Sorry, nine. That's what I nine. thought. Nine. Nine. And he got injured. And you were shaking in your boots. Everyone in in New England Patriot world was shaking in theirs. But it looks like it's not serious. No, he's going to miss one or two games. Oh, he will moment. still miss he's gonna He's going to miss this coming week. All right. And that's all we know for now. See, so. see there's a chance. There's no chance. There's still a chance. Kadri's not going to is going to somewhere find something. He's not gonna Babcock is loving him. He's putting him on the ice everywhere. No. He's going to get a groove. You know that he has. He will find that groove for a week or two where he no. scores three goals in like five games. Yeah, it's that, going to happen. That'll put him at six. Good for him. He still needs ten. He will, like I said, I think he will fight and he will get, like I said at the beginning, 14 maybe goals and that'll okay. be enough to beat Gronk. Oh, well, Gronk's going to come back and light it up. All right. Time for Saturday's Picks. This is a new segment. We pick. You listen. You bet if you want on our picks. Me and Paul are making them for Saturday. And here they are. First game, 3 p.m. Washington Capitals at Winnipeg Jets. Paul, who do you got? I'm picking Washington. They are a high-flying team. They are so good right now. Holpe's been dominant. Winnipeg has the question mark in net. Who's going to play? Is it Hutch? If it is... Washington has an even bigger chance to win. Yeah. So we both have Washington. Next, at 4 p.m., the Penguins at L.A. Yeah. I'm going I'm going with my Penguins. I'm going with my Penguins. They played well in San Jose. They're still on a long Western Coast road trip. That's I, tough right I, there. And that's why I'm going with the Kings. Kings yeah. are playing well. They're leading their division. They're playing well. They're at home. It's a long road trip, that Western swing is always rough on teams. I like how they made it a 4 o'clock game. 
that yeah. really helps Pittsburgh mm -hmm. because it's just like playing a seven o'clock game for them. Mm -hmm. So that's true. Might yeah. help. Might help yeah. the Pens in that time. Yeah. So you got Pens. I got LA. Next seven p.m. Let's go first with my Leafs at St. Louis. What do you got? I'm picking St. Louis. They're of course. they're a good team. Yeah, of they're course. playing really well. Yep. Uh, I don't know how you can stop these guys. They're solid. They usually have Toronto's number. Yeah. So I don't know how you can't go with St. Louis, even by two. St. Louis could have a two or three goal lead on that yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. St. Louis, it is for both of us. New York Islanders at Ottawa Senators. I'm going New York Islanders. Ottawa's playing really good, but I think the Islanders are going to pull it off. I'm, I'm still not sure with their goaltending with Grice. He's playing pretty well so far for them. Yeah. I'm not sure how it's going to go there, but I will go with the safe bet and go with the Senators. All right, yeah. They're playing well. Yeah, Anderson has been playing real well, so yep. he'll probably get the start. All right. We went split on that one for you and a sense for me. Next, Nashville Predators at Detroit. I'm going with Detroit. Dylan Larkin It's going to score two. Two on Renee. This kid, this kid's so much fun to watch. He's so good. This is where you, it's hard to buck the trend. Nashville's not playing well right now. When are they going to start winning? Yeah. We're both going with Detroit because we still feel that they might slip for a bit. And Detroit's playing pretty well. Yeah. Razik's doing a good job over there. Yeah. Both for Detroit. Next, the Habs in Carolina. What do you got? We team ISO'd Carolina, and we couldn't find many positives. I don't think yeah. Justin Falk can carry them. So, Montreal. Easy. That's an easy one. Here's Peter's crazy pick of the week, folks. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm going to go on a limb and say a tie or a home win for Carolina. The condom. We're not sure 100% of him right now. And he hasn't been that great lately. I'm expecting maybe Carolina gets a few on him. And maybe Carolina wins. I would like to see Foucault come into a, a game sometime soon. They He's called him up. pretty well for them down there. And they, yeah, and they said that Tukarski was sent down so he could get some games. So does that mean Foucault's just filling the gap on the bench? Yeah. I would like to see him play. That would be fun. So you got the Habs. I picked Carolina. Next, Columbus. Blue Jackets in Philly. Oh, two not very good teams. I will not be watching this on Rogers Game Center Live on Saturday <laughs> night. It'll not be my number one game to watch. Uh, I'm going to go with the Blue Jackets. Tortorella has really turned this team around. They are playing much better hockey than their first ten games. He's starting to put a stamp on the team. They're, they are playing well. But I'm not sure who they're going to put in net. Yeah. And if it's McLaney, their backup, he hasn't been playing well at yeah. all for them. No. And I have a four. feeling I have a feeling they might play him. Yeah. Because they're going to Philly, and if Newworth is playing, they have a pretty good shot yeah, at Flyers, winning the game. Flyers goalies have been playing real well. They have no. That should not be put on them for Philadelphia's faults right yeah. now. So. So I'm going with Philly. All and right. You, you went with Columbus. Yep. Yeah. Next we got. The Avalanche in Minnesota. I'm picking the home team, Minnesota. They, they're they good at home. They're they so are good at home. Yeah. excellent at yeah. home. Yeah. Dubnik is a wall at home, and these guys look like an easy win. Yeah. Looks like an easy win for It's the very way. hard to go into XL Energy Center and win a game. Yeah. And then let's go to Boston Bruins in Vancouver, a rematch of the Stanley Cup Finals a couple of years ago. I've got the Bruins because I feel that they usually have Vancouver's number. Yeah. And I feel it's going to continue again on Saturday. Yeah. I am with you. It is Boston's second of back-to-backs. So, so Gustafson is probably playing. So Gustafson's probably playing because Boston plays Calgary Friday night. So And the Monster has played excellent so far this season for yeah. the Bruins. Yeah. They need to start playing him a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll see. So you and I both picked the Bruins. Yeah. And last but not least, we have the Lightning in San Jose. Yeah. yeah. I watched the Penguins-San Jose game on Tuesday night. They didn't look very good, but they don't go on many streaks of looking bad. They really turned around quick. I'm going with the Sharks. I am almost with you there. I'm iffy on the border for the Sharks, so I'm going with Ty or home 
win All right. for the Sharks. I think it, the Sharks could win this one in OT. That's how tight I think this game is. Not sure who San Jose is going to use in net. No, it is is their second back to back as well. So yeah, they might use Staloff. Yeah, and if they do, it's going to be a close game and for sure. Friday night's game is way more important to them. It's a division game against Anaheim in so, Anaheim. So that's why I think it could be a really really tight game and probably go into overtime. In my opinion. Yeah. Martin Jones playing well, but probably not that game going to be in the pipes. Yeah. And those are. Saturday's picks. Pick them if you got them. Yeah. All right. Again, we'll see you next week. I'm your host again, Peter Bocharinov at Russia98. You can follow me on Twitter. And I'm Paul Zwambeck. Have a good weekend, everybody.